Hello, honey. I have a question for you. Do you think you would survive if the world came to an end at the hands of a zombie apocalypse? What would be your strategy? Bunker down or keep moving? Stay home, fortify your surroundings, re read manga, or go on a rampage with various kitchen utensils? Well, whatever your answer, I know for certain that I would absolutely not survive. But in Project Zomboid, you certainly get a good shot at it. Mul multiple good shots at it. Global Bobby Gedengis's particular strategy is a little different to what the average person might do. In this challenge, we're going to travel from this corner of the map all the way to this corner of the map, on foot, naked. The first order of the day is to strip away our clothing. I tear these clothes apart with my feeble, soft, indoorsman hands for ripped sheets, which may come in handy for later. We have spawned in Louisville, which is one of the more populated places in Project Zomboid, and make our way outside lest we be hindered with the crippling terror that is the indoors. You see, our body rejects the indoors. Shelter behind walls is weakness, and we need the outdoors. Sunlight. The rules for this run are simple. We will only carry what we can carry with our hands. We won't be using backpacks. We will not be using cars. We will eat only what we can procure out in the wilderness, with exception the very first phase of the journey. We will need to find some food in the city because we won't be able to scavenge for berries just yet. In the final rules, we'll be doing this all naked, one with nature. As a claustrophobic, hemophobic, obese, slow-reading, unfit man, my body rejects the modern world and craves the outdoors. Mother Nature's warm embrace. Mother Nature will appreciate my body and my incredible mohawk. Mother Nature enjoys my clown-styled foundation. This phase of the challenge will be the pee-pee phase. That's right, the pee-pee phase. PP standing for prior preparation. We're not going to survive for long in the heart of Louisville as we are. Nor will we survive out in the wilderness outside of the city without some important key items that we will need to very hastily pick up before we can leave. A tarp and some matches. Global Bobby will need a tarp to craft a tent to sleep in. And some matches or a lighter to light a campfire. There are ways to do this without matches or a lighter, but this should make our life a little easier. And Global Bobby's life is certainly not easy. We wish to not freeze to death or sleep on the floor in the dirt. The tarp can be found, I think, in hardware stores, but, but also in people's cars. We nakedly run around this parking lot, just as nature intended. Hello, tarp? Nope. 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 Oof. <laughs> Oof, at this rate I might be spending more time here than I'd really like to. The Great Indoors. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I'll eat this salami whole, all in one go. Shove it down my throat. No gag reflex. And a big jar of peanut butter, just in case. Everything scares the living shit out of Global Bobby. But we manipulate our incredibly overweight body with the agility and grace of a gazelle frolicking in the savannah. I hop my body over a tall fence that the zombos can't scale. Nice. This, uh, this should buy me some time. I'm in the zone. We are immersed in the moment. Centered in the present. Stepping on this lady's face, I realize the past is nothing but information. And the future is born only of our dreams. I'll, I think I'll steal her shoes. We must use the present as the vessel with which we travel to our dreams. Which in this case is the square at the very top right of the map. Ah oh, yes, nice. Nice. A hat. I'm going to put on this hat. Actually, actually on second thought, that's an item of clothing, so, so off it goes. And now I've ruined my mohawk. Existence is pain. The reason I switched to those sneakers in lieu of my shoes is because sneakers provide us with a handy 10% increase to movement speed. However, contrary to the name, we do not sneak better. Case in point. And what is a name if not just a basic identifier of an object or tool? A screwdriver drives screws. A freezer freezes. But our sneakers do not help with sneaking. Such is the contradiction of Project Zomboid, where the dead live and the living die. How profound. I am a poet. I'm, I'm just going to evade this horde for the time being and, and check a few more trunks before I head to the hardware store. And it looks like there's no need to go to the hardware store. I'll take these both, a tarp and water bottle. Water bottle? Calculated. I wanted to try find some matches at this petrol station, but it looks like it's all locked, so that's no good. Well, in, in the meantime, I'll forage for stones and stuff in the road. I'll need a tree branch and a stone in order to make a stone axe, which we'll definitely need. Unfortunately, these are not the stones I'm looking for. At the very least, we can do this while we make our way to the starting point at the top right of the map. I'd actually taken the outdoorsman and hiker traits to give me a higher starting foraging skill, and I think I'll definitely need that to offset the unfit overweight traits after all. Otherwise, you're pretty screwed. We're approaching the starting point of the challenge. I'm doing okay with what I've currently got on me. A jar of peanut butter, a jar of jam, some basic supplies, a tarp, a couple water bottles, some rip sheets for any injuries we might sustain, and my shoes. Still looking for materials to aid survival though. Actually, call that in. That's a chip stone we can make the axe with. And a stick. That equals an axe. 
A slug. I'll save that for later. Mm -mm. That's some fine dining if I ever saw some. A leak to go with our slug cuisine. That's a good find. I discard the belt I'd forgotten about. The taint of clothing must leave me. I am immersed in the wilderness. I think I've lost all the zombies that were on my trail earlier. And if I haven't, then I'll then I'll shortly corner myself, which <laughs> such is the profound wisdom of Global Bobby Gidenges. I walk with the wilderness at dusk, one with nature. I eat an entire lemon I picked up somewhere in the city. Citrusy goodness. I jog for only a short period of time, because I am unfit and overweight. I have crafted a stone knife from a branch and a stone, and use this knife to create four stakes for our tent. Berries. Yes, berries. Ambrosia. Nature's gift. I create a spear. I reject humanity and return to monkey. I just found a whole ass potato. <laughs> it's just dawned on me that this walk to the corner was filled with gifts. The riches of survival. And more berries. Blobble Bobby is beside himself with joy. The beginning corner means we've completed the preparation phase. Unfortunately without matches or a lighter for a fire. And I've just now realized I lack the garden saw to create a, an alternative for a fire. Fires require sturdy sticks to make and so does my tent. Sturdy sticks come from logs which are easy to get because I can chop trees down with my stone axe. But without the garden saw I can't turn the logs into planks and then planks into sturdy sticks. So, so basically my preparation being entirely to establish myself with a tent and campfire has, has failed miserably. I have failed at the PP phase. Wallowing in my failure, I wander the dark of the forest, totally shitting myself. I mean, I expect there are no zombugs around here, but you know that's how Project Zomboid gets you. You need to expect the unexpected. I sleep on the floor like an animal for the first night. And by some miracle, I awake safe and sound the next day. We are here, the starting point of an adventure, the start of a new day. I have my spear. I have become monkey. The primordial Homo erectus. I am in pain because my feeble body did hours of squats last night. And I am suffering from delayed onset muscle soreness. But my hope is that while I'm in the woods I can up my fitness skill for the next time I really need it. I run for hours. I am well and truly lost in the woods. But man do I weave between these trees like a champ. I weave like the master weavesman. My humanity is the thread and my body is the needle. Weaving the forest of life. It's only been an hour or two and uh, Blobble Bobby is already starting to fall asleep. I guess, uh, I guess collapsing of exhaustion on the forest floor last night was not conducive to a good night's sleep. But I have to ignore my basic bodily functions and keep moving. I must weave the trees and travel to the left of the map. To the left, to the left. But I also kind of want to do all I can to avoid Louisville and the hordes of zombos within. So I uh, travel down and left. And is down, is down south? We are, we are traveling south left. But I can see I'm not going to make it through the day with the state of my current drowsiness. Which I think impairs the rate at which your stamina uh, slash endurance comes back to you, which affects your movement speed and your combat strength. I guess I'll just finish off whatever stamina I have remaining by forcing my poor malnourished forest clown into another rigorous squat regime and allow him to sleep once again on the dirt floor. I didn't manage to pick up a watch or alarm clock while I was in town, so I have no way of waking at a time that works best for navigating a forest. As, as such, I rise at midnight, shove some berries, leeks, and my lucky potato down my gullet. I'm, I'm too afraid to move, so I'm just gonna power through some midnight squats, and continue doing so until daybreak, I guess. And then sleep again on the floor, on a hill of ants. Now in immense pain and already losing weight, I'm, I'm ready to at least do most of my traveling during the daytime through these woods. Noth nothing to see here, just this crazy overweight clown running through the local forest. Eating random wild mushrooms we encounter along the way. The psychedelic steak of the vegan world. Powered by fungus and various plant matter, I continue. The further south left down we go, the thinner the forest gets. And I'm starting to get genuinely worried about approaching the zombie hordes that, that sort of wander in and around the uh, outskirts of Louisville. Uh, especially in this particularly vulnerable state of having slept only on the floor and perpetual exhaustion. However, not too exhausted to not continue squatting. Although, honestly, this is just a good strategy to force Blobble Bobby to get tired at around the time I want him to, so he can hopefully sleep the right way through the night. Oh no. But, but, it's, but it's at least early morning. My circadian rhythm is a gem. A gem housed within the temple of my body. A perfectly circular prism. I wonder the dark. Clown-faced but unamused by this plight. If you are what you eat, and if berries are sweet, and you only eat berries for long enough, do you become sweet? I'm a sweet man. The forest is clearing up now and I'm certain that means our uh, immediate danger approaches more closely. Um, I still need a garden saw and some matches. I was hoping to find either of them on the floor while foraging the, in the woods, but I think we may have been in too deep in the forest. 
I've been in the forest for days now, and it just seems like we, uh... Yep, yep, we aren't very far left indeed. <laughs> More lefting will be required. And contact, we have visual. A road and some zomboys. Uh, don't see much need to go around when they're this thin. I'll, I'll channel my inner monkey. Dad, where do zombies go when they die? They, they go to zombie heaven, son. Uh, I didn't get much use out of that. Uh, four kills for one spear. Not ideal, but much easier than using my bare hands. I am but a bushman with his adult diaper on and some clown makeup. Are we really expecting longevity out of a spear I crafted? Well, uh, welp, I won't be going that way. We go over the fields and far away. The blobble bobbies come out to play. No, but really, I think getting a garden saw and some matches is probably a matter of urgency now. I'm amazed that I didn't get too cold overnight in the forest those few times I uh, slept on the floor. Being cold for prolonged periods of time can cause a cold, and that means uh, with sneezing and coughing, sneaking's pretty much out of the window. That's probably a death sentence. So I really need those matches. I continue on through what felt like endless fields. Even managing to pick up a shotgun with six rounds preloaded. Not exactly the quietest form of defense, but I'm not averse to having a little bit of fun. Like weaving trees in the forest, I had to weave between small packs of blambies in the fields. They collected with such frequency that I would have to resort to some stealthy forms of killing to avoid attracting attention. And not unlike some people's dark sexual fantasies, a stealthy kill would sometimes mean stepping on a zombie's face. Master of stealth. I could only move as fast as my exhausted, unfit body would allow. It was clear the exhaustion was starting to affect my ability to defend myself. Each kill was taking multiple tries, further exhausting the blobble. And the more tired I got, the less stamina I recovered. But I happened on some wild ginseng right about the time I ran out of water in the bottles I'd collected. It was a precarious situation to be in, but at least fueled entirely by ginger root, a food item which restores your endurance a little bit, I was able to make it to a burned down village. The search for water was becoming urgent, but let it be known that I would go to no uncertain lengths in order to survive. As such, the toilets became the fountain of life, from which I would hydrate, sweet ambrosia of the bowl. Taking in the small victories of the day, I crawled away into the bushes nearby like our most ancient ancestors, like the furtive bush goblin I am. The following morning was foggy, and I'd woken to find myself with near zero visibility, and I was starting to grow hungry. Without any food, I'd be forced to traverse the fog and scrounge to survive. I found a scrumptious cockroach in the bins. I'm not above this, so I'll take it. But it will require cooking to prevent illness. Matches in this car's glove box marks another milestone discovery. That I can now make a fire and not freeze to death on cold nights is encouraging. But I am pursued by a sizable group of bunsies now, so I make a hot getaway. Berries and toilet water bring life to Blobble Bobby. I reject the allure of breads and assorted baked goods like I reject modern day society. I am a wild man now. I search through bins and I am perplexed by modern musings such as this fence. I trip over because I am unathletic and eat black sage to deal with the pains of my physical exertion. However, there is no natural remedy for exhaustion, terror, depression and anxiety. Or we millennials would have found it already. I hate looking at myself in the mirror and wash off my face paint. I am no longer a clown, I'm a killer. I stalk in the fog, and easily dispatch my enemies with the face stamp only fan special. Sustaining only minor ailments like any true warrior, I rub my shaft in the forest. I, okay, <laughs> I eject rounds onto the floor. No, no, okay, I'm unloading and reloading my weapon. Uh, this should increase my reloading skill, which uh, for a pump action shotgun should in theory increase my rate of fire. And that may just help me in a pinch. And once I get that level up, I'll uh, have a look at that camp behind me. It looks military, so I may just find more ammunition there. Onwards and upwards. Um, I'm probably too tired to take on a place that will probably have me trapped on all sides, as the fence suggests, so I'll, uh, I'll just sneak into the forest for a quick nap. Squats before snooze, as is tradition. So I uh, awake at night, as expected. I can't tell if I slept like 30 hours or just 5. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll take that mushroom. The beef steak of nature. Um, I don't think I can shoot through fences, I think? But while they, uh, while they work on breaking out that gate to allow me entry, I think I'm going to go live and just uh, clear out the area. Sweet. With this stash, I've recuperated more rounds than I spent, which is uh, a good sign. I'll handle these last two before I head out back west. Phone it in, Colonel. I've been running for what feels like hours. 
This poor man in his adult diaper just wants to sit down, eat macaroni and cheese and watch old school MTV reruns. Let's get into it. Get stupid. I'll sleep underneath this car for a quick bit of energy before I continue. Really not ideal, but I've been sleeping on a floor for like an entire in-game week, so this is like a massive luxury. The remainder of this trip through this closed-off military installation is much of the same. We encounter what seems like housing claimed by the military. This whole installation is like a blockade. Just the furniture being outside of the house and the insides being filled with military gear is great environmental storytelling. If you haven't played this game before and enjoy that kind of thing, uh, common in Dark Souls games too, then I think you'll enjoy that aspect of Project Zomboid. I'll uh, haphazardly blast some zombongs away, uh, creating a massive amount of noise bearing absolutely no consequence because the area seems to be pretty barren of activity, I guess. Unfortunately, I'm getting quite hungry and as long as I'm in this place, I doubt we're going to be able to scavenge for food. Um, I'm drenched, starving, and tired, uh, but I found this break in a fence and that seems pretty good. Dude, I feel totally cheated by this place with all the tents, but at least uh, this means we can dump our tarp and stakes and pack up one of these tents and just store it in our adult diaper like everything else. Chop down this tree to feed a nearby campfire, which should warm us up a touch in this rain. Uh, and when we're done, we can probably also pack up this campfire kit to take with us. But while we are here, we can take this time to scoop up any uh, rainwater. Definitely not safe to drink right away, uh, but we can boil this at the campfire to prepare for when we eventually do leave. A watch, nice. I'm gonna say this doesn't count as clothing. It's more of an accessory anyway. Uh, it's 8 a.m. Good to know when I am. Now I just have to find out uh, where I am. So eating this caterpillar will inflict us with deep depression. But really, it could be worse. It, it's just a bit of protein. Blobble Bobby truly is pathetic. Okay, I've got to hatch an escape plan. But this is pretty tricky. I'm, I'm not even sure these gates will open. I use my strength to will them open on the way. I read a book to heal my crippling depression. But remember, one of my bad traits is I am a slow reader. So I am slow to undepress myself. I dispatch this rabble. I am the master of combat. The god of war. Man diaper Kratos. I, I won't master this though. I, I'm merely a passenger. I simply walk past my problems as if they don't exist. Just like in real life. I can probably... Okay, nope. This is really a precarious situation to be in. But if I, if I can defend myself, I might be able to hold out long enough for the other zombies to, uh, break, break the gate down? Oh, God. Ah, uh, Blobble Bobby. Despite cocking his rifle in the woods that one time to gain a point in reloading, I'm now too nervous to automatically operate a pump action. So I'm having to press the X button to load the slug in myself in order to be able to shoot. Here's my chance. Okay, okay, now, now I just have to lose him. I've only alerted an entire blockade's population of zombies to my exact location by using the thunderous sound of a firearm. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll be okay. My main concern is I lack the fitness to be able to pull off a long and continuous pursuit. I'll just uh, sit my diaper down in this puddle and try to, try to rest while I think of something. Well rested. I can at least just casually crouch past these ones without much concern. I sneak through the woods so they lose my trail. I wash my face in the river water. I... <laughs> I shit myself. It's sort of in the nature of cross-country events or challenges uh, that there's a monotony to the walking. However, I have, I have played Death Stranding, so I think I'll have no issues. I'm an, I'm an experienced walker. I lure the crowd of zombies that are on my tail to a secluded location and open fire on them, where I assume little else will hear the noise. I assumed incorrectly. After a quick escape, I settle down for the night with our new tent. Which, fun fact, actually prevents zombies from reaching you in the night, even if they do find your location. Things are starting to look up. Did I say things are starting to look up? Uh, with the helicopter luring everything to me, this is, uh, this is going to become an endurance race. And I am already losing. So the helicopters found me, the, the sound of it lures all the zombies in a massive radius towards me. Uh... Uh, my hope is that the helicopter gets bored soon. Listen, man, I'm just a... I'm but a man in an adult diaper, oh boy. And it looks like they did get bored, uh, or they lost me in the woods. I'm too stealthy for them. Sticking to the riverbank seemed to be the obvious choice. It was flowing southwest and I needed to travel west. The zombie population didn't seem to thin out, so I had to be really careful with my stamina usage. The trees were my ally. Making camp near them meant less visibility both for me and for the zombies. Stumbling on some railways along our journey leads us closer to our goal. South-left. 
A foundation kit rekindles our inner clown, and I've made it to West Point. The problem with West Point is there are a lot of Zombongos. Yep, if we just keep walking and ignore them, then, then we should be a-okay. <laughs> yes, definitely a-okay. Mm, I'd, have, I'd have liked to get the axe out of that zombie, but I don't think I can. Now, I'm just going to retreat into these trees here and return to Monkey. Detroit become Monkey. I, 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 say, I say weird things when I'm nervous. <laughs> and nervous I was. But we had returned to the safety of the woods. I feast on mushrooms. Where I'd initially felt very vulnerable in the woods, I was starting to feel at home. I chop wood. Expend energy for fire. I survive, not thrive. I eat an entire root of ginger. I chop a tree until my axe breaks. Like I said, this is survival, not th thrival. Squat. Rest. Fire. Squat. Rest. Squat. Sleep. Morning squat. Rest. Eat caterpillar. Achieve severe depression. Kill local wildlife. I'm no longer safe. What should I do now? Squat. Finding a way to forget reality. Squat. We're not even close to getting a skill point in fitness. Rest. Squat. Sleep. For many, spending time in a forest or place overflowing with nature would bring tranquility. But for us, it's nature's training ground. For the unfit and overweight, this is hell. And though the rains wash away our clown face painting, it cannot wash away the pain from yesterday. Or our adult diaper, which remains drenched in blood. But at least it's not my blood. Our only company is the feeling of anxiety we develop along the way. The pure distilled panic of being alone in the woods. And the uncertainty of such endeavors. Spending days in the wilds can break a man. A man must drink from puddles on the floor. And silently look on at country roads that will never take me home. A man must scavenge. And eat an entire onion raw in one go. Many days are spent in the forest, squatting by the campfire until the dark of nightfall. After having entered the woods on the 17th of July, and emerging on the 20th, we traverse some open fields. Berries exist in abundance here to trade off the vulnerability of no longer being monkey of the forest in relative safety. But even still do open pastures come to pass. For a change, I follow the country roads to what looks like a collision. Two walking corpses and smashed vehicles. Another example of effective environmental storytelling. Perhaps one had turned and then turned the other. Or maybe they were both infected before the accident. I loot the cars and find some foundational makeup. For a change, I go ahead and apply another clown mask. It has just become who I am. It's ingrained in the Blobble Bobby Gedengis. There are two kinds of players. Ones that live in the cities and thrive in constant danger. And those that hide away in the remote places of the map and prefer to farm. Fortunately, I get to do a bit of both. Nice. A, a, a bit late in the run to be getting a hand axe, but it does replace our flimsy stone axe, so that's good. We got heaps late in this run. The tent, the campfire kit, matches, our, our dignity, <laughs> clinical depression. However, on the topic of two kinds of players, I've had a lot of downtime in the forest, and uh, though I've never been there, there is a military base on the way to the leftmost corner of the map. I reckon I'll have a cheeky skiz at that on the way to our goal. Ah, industry. The remnants of humanity. Maybe I can find a book and read away my depression. Nah, of course. I'm claustrophobic. All I find here is terror. My humanity is my weakness. All I desire is to return to monkey. If nothing else, I can do some vandalizing. Just breaking and entering. Guess I'll, guess I'll kill the owner. No one can stop me. This whole warehouse is full of rotten food. <gasps> Potato sacks! And they're good to eat! They call me the Lord of Potatoes. Just gonna... I'm not even gonna enter this one. That was just for fun. Well, I've collected as many potato sacks as I could, but I'm being crushed by the sheer amount of potato weight I'm carrying. Well, I'm, I'm out of shotgun rounds now, so I guess I'll drop that over here to reduce our weight. Discard the technology and return to Monkey. I am compelled by the potatoes to travel in this direction. The potatoes guide me. The potatoes have guided me to what looks like maybe low-cost housing or a, or a new development. Definitely more interesting than endless green, I guess. I could use some books to help with the depression. But like always, all I find is otherworldly terror at being in this comfortable suburban home. Another home, another fresh set of nightmares. The existential dread of being indoors is quite possibly worth it. If I can find another book or two, I can possibly completely cure my depression. Just like in real life. Okay, I'm out of here. Ah, yes, Marvel Comics.
Surely now I can inject some dopamine into my life. I'm sure Blobble Bobby will be delighted to read comics once he is done with his rigorous hour-long squat routine out in the middle of someone's field. It's as Kathleen Kennedy once said, I don't analyze things all the time, I just do them. Much like Blobble Bobby just scrounges for firewood and shits in adult diapers. But at the end of the day, the good times outweigh the hardships. Because now we get to binge read all of the Fantastic Four comics, which actually completely cures my depression. Three comics was all it took. Such is the power of a well-structured visual novel. Why can't millennials just figure this out? My cup overfloweth. I eat from my abundant potatoes. Squat with the power of potato. Allow the darkness to descend. With potato I am fearless. Squat in the darkness. And rest in potato. Potato breakfast. Potato walk. Potato run. Potato strength. I think I'm starting to get closer to the military base and uh, possibly the final stretch of forest in this run. I'm surprised I've made it this far, um, in truth. I can't see much stopping us now. I'm fairly certain other than the military base, there's nothing between me and my position now and the end goal. Oh, I spoke too soon. Uh, it's just a laceration, but I'll have to keep an eye on it. I'm going to have to hope that's not infected and uh, causes zombification. That's really not good. I've not seen many zombugs for a while now. This uh, leg of the forest seems pretty quiet. I wonder if it'll stay this way as we approach the base. Uh, more activity now. I think that's to be expected. I can take one or two, uh, but more than that, I'm probably going to be best off just walking past them. I can do this for a while to prevent being ganged up on, but I'll, I'll end up having to set up a small camp and strategically clear them out day by day. There's just too many of them in the roads. Though if I do start to feel queasy, that'll mean I'm infected and, uh, and I'll have to book it as quick as I can to the destination. This path looks like it leads somewhere. This will be a good place to set up camp. I'd encountered a lot of hostility nearby, so I'm understandably nervous about settling down, and even more so about the uh, task ahead. No, what a time to have night terrors. What a thrill with darkness and silence through the night. Oh my god, where is that noise coming from? I can't sleep due to panic. Okay, I'll set up a fire. That's probably a good start. How the fuck am I supposed to find firewood and kindling in this darkness? I'm searching and I'll melt into you. I've never experienced the dark like this in Project Zomboid. This is some freaky shit. What a fear in my heart, but you are so supreme. After having experienced one of the worst nights in Project Zomboid ever, I, uh, I arise to notice our amazing potato stash has turned bad overnight. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. But the job is not done. I need to clear the way and infiltrate the nearby military base. I have to channel my inner snake eater. Some day you feed on a tree frog. This ordeal the trial to survive. For the day we see new light. I give my life. Not for honor. But for you. In my time there'll be no one else. Naked. It's the way I fly to you. Uh, I'm actually starting to feel like a real weapon. Dual wielding wooden spears turning... Turning from an overweight, unfit man ravaged by mourning and depression into a stealthy force. I'm still in a dream, Snake Eater. I can probably stand to stop making Metal Gear Solid references now. I just can't help it. Project Zomboid is a slow and deliberate game, but the more I do one of anything such as stealth, my mind can't help but do this to me. I am but a silly man with silly thoughts. Forgive me. Oh, oh god. It's been a long day. I'm totally drenched top to bottom in the blood of my enemies. Uh, my scratch from early unfortunately is infected. Which means I could be going through zombification. I don't know, I'll have to keep an eye on that. I eat mushrooms. I circle around on my ass. I squat. I sleep. I rise to kill again. I sneak. I struggle. I kill a zombie with a satchel. In the satchel are books. I read. I read and I circle on my ass. This cures my severe clinical depression. Is is that another shotgun? It is! It's Blobble Bobby has a fun time, the sequel. Guns are infinitely more dangerous than stealth, but uh, it makes it so much more fun. I might be able to find some more ammunition in the secret military base, but we'll have to wait and see. Ooh, progress. I must be near. There are many more zombies here though, so I'm feeling significantly less safe. I'll give them the old slip in here. Ooh, yep, okay. Starting to take unnecessary risks now. Just gonna, just gonna calmly... Yep, close one. Just calmly walk up this way. 
Well, I'm here now. Everything's fine. Everything's fine here. Uh, how are you guys doing? Please comment. I'm fine, honey. Ah! Let me in. Let me in! I'm really hoping... Okay, I was really hoping it would be empty in here. Not sure what I was expecting. But if I can find some shotgun shells, I can probably have some fun clearing this place out. Fun, yes. I'm having so much fun. Ah, uh, oh boy. I'm gonna jump through this uh, broken window and slice up my hands. This is fine. Everything is fine. Please comment, uh, it's not fine, Blobble Bobby, it's not fine at all. A sheet of paper for me to doodle on while I wait. Blobble Bobby's haiku. I am in a room. I am afraid of indoors. But not afraid now. For real, I, I guess claustrophobia only happens in small spaces? This window is a 50-50, uh, does it land on a roof outside or do I go down a floor? I can't just, uh, walk back downstairs. So I guess we're jumping. Nailed it. I sustained a bit of damage doing that, but I didn't get any bad injuries, so we have that going for us. I was really hoping coming here was worth the detour, but it's starting to look like I'm in over my head. Does this place not have an armory? Moreover, how am I going to leave? Uh, surely I can't just go back the way I came. Unless... Why are we still here? Just to suffer. I guess I have to go down the stairs. Unless... How the Pythagoras am I still alive? I don't know how I did this, why I did this. All I know is where I'm going. And where I'm going is the leftmost corner of the map. And should I be infected in the wounds with zombification, then by God I'm going to make it there before I turn. My man diaper is drenched in blood. I'm drenched in blood. I'm afraid of blood. I have the hemophobic trait. I'm crippled by depression, exhaustion, hunger, pain, anxiety. All, basically all the bad moodles. But this is who I am. This is who Blobble Bobby Gedengis is. We find roads in the dark, meaning in our pain. A place to rest in no place at all. A path in the overgrowth. We find hope in nothingness. And though there be no food to find because the devs haven't coded this part of the map to be forageable, we still find the undead. But their numbers are meaningless because we can't count. And through perseverance and the belief to push on do we forge the possibility of success from certain failure. With our wounds miraculously healed somehow, and not infected, we read a comic to calm down. Though we have the slow reader trait, looking at pictures is fine. Marvel comics are the literature of life. We make haste through the trees. Neither human nor monkey, but the perfect breed of whatever is in between. Whatever we are, the missing link. Global Bobby is the missing link. Mushrooms are the stake of the forest, and the forest grows thicker. The path's more scarce, but like all hardships in life, the suffocation opens up to greener pastures, where you can find respite, maybe even comfort, an end to the hardship. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe, honey. Leave a comment about your day. How are you, honey? And join the Discord. There's like 20 people in there, but every day the cult grows stronger. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Until next time, see ya.